Have you ever printed something only to find out it's got a bad case of chicken pox? What are these little dots? What is this squiggly line? And how can you remove it? Well, it's called Z-Seam. And in this video, I'll walk you through all the different ways you can control it, how you can hide it, and how you can 3D print without one at all. My name is Angus and this is Maker's Muse. Let's get started. Alrighty, so if you've been printing for some time now, then you already know what a Z seam or Z seam is. But with the advent of easy to use machines, I've seen many people wondering what the heck this line is and why it seems to show up in the worst places. FDM slash FFF 3D printers create prints by extruding molten plastic, line by line, layer by layer. And each of these little lines needs to start and stop. For example, with the cylinder, the external perimeter starts, moves around the circumference of the cylinder, and then stops. And it's this point right here where the extrusion starts and stops that a seam will be created. And it can be really significant. The difference between a print looking like this or like this all comes down to your seam settings. So let's jump straight into Orca Slicer and explore the various seam settings and what they do. I will start with Nearest. Nearest has been the default seam setting for many years and it may still be so in your slicer. What Nearest does is it attempts to hide the seam of each layer in a detail like an internal or external corner, like the edge of this cube for example. This can work great with models with lots of texture, but because each layer's seam position is calculated independent of the others, it can look quite messy. For example, with this cube, the seam positions jump between two different edges or more, seemingly at random. While they won't be as visible as if they're in the middle of the cube's walls, they're still not all that neat. But wait, it can get even worse. Look what happens when I slice a cone with the nearest seam setting. Total chaos and a really ugly print. But why is this happening? Well, that's because with geometry like a cone, cylinder, or sphere, there is no nearest edge to hide the seam in, so it just puts it in randomly, or probably nearest the starting point of the perimeter for each layer. So instead of nearest, the seam setting aligned is probably the one you'll use most often. Aligned acts like a intelligent nearest, attempting to hide seams in edges while simultaneously trying to keep them aligned to each other vertically in a clean manner. You can see that with the align setting, the edges of the cube and cone both instantly clean up into a neat line. For the vast majority of my prints, I use the nearest seam setting. It's easy, automatic, and for the most part, does a great job at hiding seams. But it's not perfect because yes, it's smart, but it doesn't have contextual awareness. Take this print, for example. This is the Gaia Anderson cat. It's an Egyptian artifact housed in the British Museum that was scanned by the Scan the World initiative. It's one of my favorite difficult to 3D print models that I use to test printers. And when you slice it with the line seams, it starts to show the issues with this setting. As human beings, we can see that all the nice detail we want to preserve is at the front, but because that's where detail is, it's where the slicer tries to hide the seams. And this will reduce the quality of the print in that area. And don't even think about trying nearest because it will give an even worse result. So what can you do? Enter seam painting. This nifty feature was introduced to Prusa Slicer back in 2021. And because Orca Slicer is built on that slicer engine via Bamboo Studio, it has the feature as well. Much like manual support painting, seam painting lets you control where seams will be placed on the model. And for prints where context is important, it's incredibly useful. For the Gator Anderson cat, you're most likely to view it from the front where that interesting detail is. So I like to place a seam running from the top of the head down the back. Similarly, you might also want to control where the seams are for the ears and legs, positioning them at the rear of certain geometry to hide the seams from view. Obviously, this won't remove seams entirely. There still will be a visible line, but it moves them out of the visual focal point of the print, and it's an incredibly powerful feature that not many people take advantage of. And hey, if you're finding this video useful, then why not subscribe? Here on Maker's Muse, it's my aim to empower your creativity through technology, and I've got a whole backlog of tutorials just like this one, as well as my ebook, The Ultimate Book of 3D Printing Tips and Tricks, linked below. But now let's move on to advanced seam settings. Things like seams as a detail in themselves, or hiding them completely with specialized seam settings. And we'll start with using seams as a detail. 
Random seams is a setting that will ruin the look of your print, guaranteed, and many people wonder why it exists in the first place, but it can have its uses. Random seams can create a textured effect that makes prints like this screwdriver handle have a little bit more grip, or you can use them to hold a tire in place on a rim, whereas a seam line may make it difficult to glue the tire down in place and throw off the concentricity of the rim. But I'll be honest, random seams have largely been superseded by the fuzzy skin setting, which randomizes the position of the outer perimeter, creating a rough surface finish, which I find far more useful when it comes to a grippy texture or aesthetic choice. Okay, I hear you. You want to remove the seam altogether. Well, you can with spiral vase mode, but there's a catch. This is a dedicated printing mode, which only prints the base and then the outer perimeter of an object in one continuous extrusion, continuously moving up in the Z axis to complete the print. Prints using this mode are limited to one single perimeter with no infill. However, many people have hacked this setting over the years to do all sorts of incredible things like single wall perimeter 3D printed aircraft frames for remote control planes. When it comes to spiral vase mode, geometry is super important for the setting to work well, because you only have a single perimeter layer to work with and angle changes must be kept to a minimum or you'll end up with drooping and ugly looking voids in the print. It can create some beautiful prints if used well, and they print fast with very little material, but it's not exactly practical for everyday printing. In that case, your best bet for hiding seams for normal prints is scarf seams. Scarf seams are still fairly new, but the idea is that you can hide the start and end of seams by ramping the starts and ends over each other across the Z axis. This spreads it over a wider area, but results in a detail which is much less obvious than the little zit caused by a seam starting and stopping, especially with shiny silk filaments. Scarf seams have the added benefit of making the seam stronger because it's effectively stitching the outer perimeters together instead of simply butting the two ends up against each other. But keep in mind that enabling scarf seams will change the location of these seams entirely, and having a seam detail spread out instead of hidden in a corner or behind geometry may actually be detrimental to the overall appearance of your final print, depending on what you're after. So it's definitely worth experimenting, finding out exactly which setting you like best. Check out this video next if you'd like to see why I've switched to Orca Slicer for my printing projects, because it's genuinely an incredibly powerful bit of software. Drop a like and subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Bye.